So we're going to dive into part three of our midweek conversation that we've been having. And it's a conversation, it's a, it's a lesson simply on, can you hear me now? Talking about hearing the voice of God, hearing the presence of God speak to you. And of course, the first thing we've all got to come to grips with is God does want to speak to us. And this is why I believe tonight can revolutionize your life, because we're going to dig in to the different ways and the various means by which. God speaks to us. So I want to uh, just have this dialogue. Well, it's not really a dialogue. It's a monologue, I guess. But I want to have this conversation with you. Thank you, Jeremy. You brought that to my attention the other week. I say that often. Um, but I, I, wanna, I really want to talk to you about what it really, what it looks like to hear the voice of God. Because how many know that is probably, it is the most crucial element in your spiritual journey of faith. And because of that, We've got to be very careful because I know the enemy can also slip in and try to uh, deceive and try to... Let me tell you something. The devil is not an original. How many know that? There's nothing that he does that is an original. All the devil does is try to emulate. He tries to imitate what God does. And so therefore, when we get into the realm of the supernatural, we've got to be very careful that we know that we're hearing the voice of God. That's why when Paul was talking about the Corinthian believers in tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy, this is what he said in 1 Corinthians 14. He said, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. How many of there's a lot of voices going on in the world right now. And so many times when we get into the realm of the supernatural, many times it's hard to distinguish between, you know, the voice of God, our own voice, our own spirit, the voice of others, and, and, and sometimes the enemy kind of slips in as well. So our objective tonight is to give you a clear-cut path on how you can and you will hear from God. And when you follow these things and you believe these things from the Word of God, I believe the Lord's going to just open up some things into your life and you're going to see see some things that you've never seen. We're going to talk, not tonight, but we're going to talk about dreams. We're going to talk about visions. We're going to talk about spiritual gifts, the different methods and means by which God speaks. Now, having said that, again, John reminds us, 1 John 4 and verse 1, I really didn't have a text. I'm just kind of digging into the words with you tonight. But he said, beloved, he said, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, I don't say those things to discourage you, but rather I want you to be encouraged. Because look at me now, God will speak to anybody that is willing to listen. How many tonight are willing to listen and hear the voice of God? Let me hear you shout amen. He will speak to anybody that is willing to listen. And I don't care where you are in life. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how old or young you are. God desires to speak to you. I came across this in my personal devotions the other day. I've been reading the book of Job. And I tell you what, Job is a fascinating book. And as I was reading it, one of the younger men that were kind of on the outskirts and letting the older men talk, he made a statement in this verse that I'm going to share with you that I thought was really good. And I wanted to share it with you tonight because many times what we do is we think, you know what, God is speaking to pastors and preachers and evangelists and older men and women in the faith. God's not going to talk to me. But look at what this man said in Job 32, Elihu. He said this, he said, I'm young and you're very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and I durst not show you my opinion. I said, days should speak. In other words, let the, let the older men speak, and the multitude of years should teach wisdom. But I love what he said in verse 8. There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Glory to God. I want you to, I want you to get that. How many believe you are a spirit? Let me hear you shout amen. Amen. And because you are a spirit, the spirit of Almighty God will have a, a, a way of giving you that divine understanding where you can walk in spiritual enlightenment. Let me tell you something, church. The world needs you to be at your spiritual best right now. 
They need you to be at your spiritual best. We don't have time to be messing around and, you know, living subpar and halfway. We've got to be at our spiritual best. And so, therefore, my motivation tonight is for you to get into a place, me to get into a place where the Spirit of God gives me that enlightenment and that understanding. And so, let's dive into this together. So, number one, the first way and the most obvious way that God speaks to you is through His written Word. Amen. Nothing else we talk about matters if you are not reading the Word of God. Okay? Because I know we live in a day when, uh, you know, there's a lot of so-called utterances that are coming out from a variety of sources, and you can get on YouTube, and you can find people saying things and, and supposedly prophesying things. Some of them are good. Some of them are not quite good. But I'm going to tell you something. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what God has said in this book right here. Do you believe that? Shout Amen. And you are not going to hear from God in any other way until you are taking time to get into the written word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we know this. I know it's obvious, but I need to remind us because there's a variety of ways God can use any means by which to speak to you. I mean, I love even in the book of Daniel, chapter 5, in the middle of a feast, the finger of God, the Bible said, came and began to write on the plaster now, I don't know about you, but if I saw the finger of God writing on that wall over there, how many believe I'd be, I'd be paying attention? Amen. God can speak in any way that he wants to speak. He can come down in a dramatic fashion. He can come down. He can revolutionize and get your attention. Amen. In all of these ways, but primarily, this is the way God speaks to us. And we've got to get this sealed because here's what the Bible says, and you know this, 2 Timothy 3 and 16, that all Scripture, everybody say all Scripture, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, the key word is the word inspiration. Because when you look at the word inspiration, the Greek word theonoustos, and when you break that word down, theo means God. Pneuma means breath or spirit. And so when these men, Peter and Paul and John and Luke and the authors of the Scripture sat down to write, the Bible says in 2 Peter 1 and verse 21 that the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so when you look at the Word of God, because there will be some that say, well, what about the Koran, or what about other religious texts, or what about other... Let me tell you something. There is only one Word of God, and it is the Word that was inspired when these men sat and the Holy Ghost breathed on them. And when you look at this, when you understand that when you read the Word of God, you are not hearing, you're not hearing just a man's ideology. You are hearing a direct utterance from the heart of God himself. The Holy Ghost breathed on these men, and they wrote as the Holy Ghost instructed them to write. Now, this may be kind of a crude illustration, so forgive me if it, if it really doesn't, you know, it, you know, look good, but I'm just going to, how many know, how many believe this, this wad of paper in and of itself cannot and will not move? How many know that? It's just going to sit there. But the moment that I breathe on this wad of paper, it moves. Was it the wad of paper that did it or was it my breath? It was my breath. Let me tell you, Peter, Paul, Luke, John, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Solomon, David, all of the authors of Scripture, how many know they were imperfect men? They had their faults. They had their flaws. Every one of them were imperfect. But when the Spirit of God breathed on them, they were moved by the breath of Almighty God and wrote as the presence of God moved. So when you read the Scripture, my friend, you are not really reading a religious text. You are reading something that is straight from the mouth of Almighty God. And brother, if you want to hear God speak, put your nose back in the Word of God because this is the way God 
God is going to speak to you. Can you shout amen to that? No matter what, so many, I want a word from God. I need to hear from God about my marriage. I need to hear from God about my money. I need to hear from God. Listen, stop asking for God for, a, uh, uh, for God from, a, from a word. Get into what's written and you will see he's got the answer to every single area of your life right in this book right here. Amen? He does. And so therefore, we've got to understand, amen, that this is the primary way because God is not going to speak to you in any other way until you are first reading his word. I know (laughs) there's so many that want to be used in the prophetic. They want to be used in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They want to be used in all of these things, which is great. But brother, God's not going to use you in the prophetic until you are reading the word of God. He's not going to use you in the supernatural until you are getting into the book. Now, because when, when, what happens is when you read the Word of God, that breath, that anointing that inspired the Word comes alive inside of you. Now, I don't know about you. This is for me personally. I like to read the Word before I pray because the Word of God opens my spirit. Then when I pray, I am more apt to receive what the Holy Spirit has to say. Why? Because this is the inspired Word. Have, how many have ever been in a place... Uh, amen, of discouragement, and you opened up the book, and you opened up the Word, and suddenly the Holy Ghost came alive inside of you, and everything changed in a moment. Why? Because of the anointing of the Word of God. That's what it's about. And because God's Word is what separates experience from absolute truth. Every spiritual experience you have has got to be judged by the Word of God. Every word that you get from someone has got to be judged by the word of God. If you get a prophetic word, somebody comes and says, I've got a word for you, brother. I've got a word for you. If it does not completely match up to the word of God, you need to discount it because it is not from God because God will never violate what he has written. I don't care how good it sounds. I don't care if it's something you've been dying to hear. If it doesn't line up with the written book, then you need to discount it. You need to disregard it because God is never going to violate his word. The psalmist said, Psalm 138, he said, I will worship toward thy holy temple and I'm gonna praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above thy name. And what God has written in his word is not going to be changed. Revelation 22, if any man takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. And so the absolute first place you go when you want to hear from God is the word of God. Now, of course, I really wanted to go deep on how to study the Word and what that really looks like. And quite frankly, as I began to put these notes together, I thought, okay, there's so much I want to talk about the voice of God. That, that's going to have to be a separate study. So I'm already stacking up 2025, what that's going to look like on Wednesday nights, all right? But one of those studies is really going to be about how to study the Word of God. How many know reading the Word of God is, is not enough? You've got to study the Word of God. Amen. You've got to make it a a strategic part of your life and let the breath of God come alive. So tonight, suffice it to say, if you are not a regular, regular student of the Word, make time every day and get back into the Word. And when you get into the Word, ask Holy Spirit to awaken, amen, your spirit to receive what God has to say, because this is God speaking. Amen. How many are ready to get back into the Word? Let me hear you shout amen. So number two, God speaks primarily through the Word of God, but number two, God speaks through the inner witness of our spirit, the inner witness of our spirit. Now, how many know God is a spirit? Jesus said, (coughs) John 4 and 24, that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So because we are created in the image of God, we have a spirit that is just like God. And when you were born again, you were baptized into the body of Christ. You were baptized, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, by one spirit. 
baptized into one body, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile or bond or free, and you've been made all to drink into one spirit. And so therefore, the other primary way by which God speaks is that witness of the Holy Ghost in your spirit. Now, I want to dive deep onto this because, friend, let me tell you something. If you depend on your mind to get you through life, your mind is going to mess you up every single time. If you depend on your feelings and your emotions to get you through life, how many know your feelings are going to mess you up every single time? Amen. We've got to get into the spirit man where we are awakening that part of us that God deals with and dwells in. Because this is the part of us where the Holy Spirit abides and gives us witness that we are the children of God. Look at Romans chapter 8. I don't believe this is going to be on the screen. But Romans chapter 8, you've got to see what Paul is teaching here. He said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. (laughs) How many are glad you can call him Father tonight? Let me hear you shout amen. But what is that? That is the Spirit of God that is within us that cries out to God, amen, that cries out and says, Abba, Father. And the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. Let me tell you something, church. Look at me right here. There's a lot of people that are running around saying, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. You're not a child of God because of what church you go through, and you're not a child of God because of what you do or don't do. You are a child of God because the Holy Ghost lives inside of you, and he gives you a stamp of approval and witness in your spirit. I am a child of God, and when you pray, your spirit begins to lift up unto God himself, and your spirit gets into the realm of the supernatural, and you open up the Spirit of God to begin to speak to you. Why? Because you are praying out of your spirit, man, and not not out of your head. How many know what I'm talking about tonight? Amen. Have you ever been in a time, and maybe it's just me, have you ever been in a time of prayer and you felt like your prayers were not going anywhere? Anybody besides me? You felt like, man, this is just simply not going anywhere. But then all of a sudden you begin to get out of your head because you've been praying, thinking about all of the challenges of life, the difficulties, the rent that's due, the problems on your job. And suddenly you got out of your head and you began to pray from your spirit. And suddenly it's like heaven opened up and there was a floodgate of the presence of God that came. What is the difference? The difference is you're now praying out of your spirit and not out of your mind. Church, let me tell you something. If you want to get somewhere we hear from God, you got to get into the spirit man and let the spirit man pray, amen, from the depth of your belly, amen. Because there's a witness that is there. And that witness comes from the Holy Ghost. And when you pray into that realm, that is when you are going to hear from God. Now, what Jesus said, look at this in Luke 17. He said, the kingdom of God is within us. He said, don't look here, don't look there. In other words, the kingdom of God is not out there. How many know the kingdom of God is in here? I said, how many know the kingdom of God is in here? Do you believe the kingdom of God is within you? What that means is you have everything you need within you to fulfill the will of God and the fulfillment and the advancement of the kingdom of God. Church, listen to me. If you miss everything, don't miss this. You don't need something else to complete you. You don't need another word from somebody. You don't need some prophetic utterance from somebody. You have everything you need to be the man or the woman of God that God created you to be. And it's time for you to start digging deep and pulling up what is within you because there's wisdom there and there's knowledge there and there's power there and there's anointing there. Stop waiting on somebody else to come. You've got everything you need from Almighty God. Do you believe that? Shout amen. I believe that was for somebody tonight because so many times we're waiting on somebody else to do something. 
Man, if they would just do this, or I'm just, I need God to give me a word. Listen, you've got what you need. Awaken your spirit and let the Holy Ghost speak to you in the realm of your spirit. Amen. Now, look in Colossians 3 and verse 15. As spirit filled believers, we walk in a supernatural peace that comes from the Holy Ghost within us. Colossians 3.15, the Bible said, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Everybody shout the word rule. That word rule is from the Greek word that means to act as an umpire. Right now the World Series is going on and the Dodgers may take it home tonight. I don't know. But you know who the most important person on that diamond, that, that field is? It's not the third baseman or the shortstop. It's the man in blue behind the plate, the umpire. Because the umpire is calling the balls and strikes, and the outcome of the game can depend on his call. And so when the, when the Bible said, let the peace of God rule, it means to umpire. The peace of God should call the balls and strikes in your life. In other words, whenever you begin to do something that disrupts the peace of God, that means that, that is not the will of God for your life. And I believe that as you go through life and you make decisions, you need to allow the peace of God to guard you and to guide you. There have been many decisions I've made in life, life-changing decisions that I depended on the peace of God or the absence thereof before I made that decision. And I'm telling you, I don't know exactly where you are tonight. I don't know what you're up against, but there's some major decisions that you have and you've got to understand that human knowledge is not gonna get you through. You need the witness of the Holy Ghost in the depth of your spirit. And you allow the peace of God to be the one that calls the balls and the strikes in your life. You need the inner witness of your spirit. Now, number three. So primarily, it is the word of God. Number two, it is the inner witness. Number three, God can speak through divine revelation. God can speak through divine revelation. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. The Bible said that where there is no vision the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, the word vision in that verse literally means revelation. So the wise man said, where there is no revelation, we have no restraint. The people perish, meaning we have no restraint. We have no direction. God needs to give us a divine revelation. And when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, how many believe you will receive divine revelations from the Word of God? When you are filled, this is why, this is why church, I'm telling you, this is why I'm so big on walking in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one that authored this book. So should we not be filled with the author of the book that we're trying to understand? Amen, because when you're filled with the Spirit, all of a sudden now you're reading the Word of God and suddenly a verse leaps off the page and it's like a light bulb goes off. Anybody have that happen before? It's like your eyes now are open. The shackles come off of your eyes and it's almost like, oh man, that verse has always been there, but now suddenly God speaks to you through that verse and it's a revelation. You begin to see things in a different way. Listen, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God wants you to begin to see your life in a way like you have never seen it before. And to this point, you have judged yourself based on opinions of others. And now it's time for you to get, to get a divine revelation from God about who you are, about where you're going. And you need to shut the voices of everybody else out and say, Holy Ghost, awaken, reveal what you have said about me through the pages of this book. And when you do that, how many believe your life is going to be totally different from this point on? Come on, somebody shout amen. It's revelation. You say, but God's not giving any new revelation. No, he's given us a revelation, but you need a new revelation. Because what's happened is you've looked at life through the lens of how you were raised. You've looked at life through the lens of how you were treated. Some of you are looking through life at the lens of failed relationships. 
and you look at how you've been treated and how people have walked away from you and maybe broken marriages or maybe broken lives, and you have looked now at yourself through that kind of lens. You need to change your lens and start getting a revelation where you can now see life through the lens of the Word of God. Are you listening to what I'm saying right now? Amen. When you go to the optometrist, uh, optometrist uh, remember what he does or she does? She, they, they, they put you in that little, they put all these little lenses in front of you. I hate it because it's so hard to tell. But they say better, worse. Better, worse. How many hate that? Better? I don't know. <laughs> They're both the same. Go back. <laughs> No, let me see that one again. But you see what they're doing? They want you to have the perfect lens so that your physical sight can be 2020. And they should. But how many know God wants your spiritual sight to be 2020? He wants you to see perfectly spiritually. But so many of us, amen, are looking at life through a, through a tattered lens or a, a cloudy lens. God wants to give you a fresh revelation, and that is only coming through the Spirit of God, giving you that revelation as you read the, oh my God, somebody is about to change tonight because you're going to walk away from the lens that you've been looking through for years, and you're going to say, God, give me a new revelation of who I am in you and what I'm capable of for your glory. Come on, somebody. Do you believe that? Shout amen. Everybody shout revelation. How many believe God can give you a new revelation tonight? Let me see you raise your hand. That's why we're in church. We're in church so God can take off the scales of your eyes. Remember, remember Saul of Tarsus? Here's a guy that we look at this guy, we're thinking, okay, he's persecuting the church. He's killing believers. But let me just tell you something. We look at him as a wicked, evil person. But did you know Saul thought that he was doing the will of God? I'm doing the will of God. He was a good Jew, a good Pharisee. Until that moment uh, that on the road to Damascus, uh, God smote him and he fell to his knees uh, and he looked up into the sky and he had a revelation of the Jesus that he, he had no idea, but he had a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and he looked up uh, and, he, and Jesus spoke to him and said, I am the one you are persecuting, Saul. He said, it's hard for you to kick uh, against the pricks. Uh, and from that moment, he was blinded until Ananias came. And the Bible said when he prayed for Saul, what happened? The Bible said the scales of his eyes were removed and suddenly Saul, the persecutor, became Paul, the apostle. Did he change? It was his perspective that changed. Let me tell you something. So many people, they live their life. Man, I'm just doing the best I can. I'm trying my best. I'm trying hard. You need a Damascus Road experience where the scales of your eyes come off and you see Jesus for who he is in all of his glory, grace, love, and mercy. And you know that he's got greater and better and stronger things for you. Why? Because you've had a revelation. And church tonight, I don't know where you are. And I don't know exactly how you feel about yourself or what you're up against in life. But I believe tonight when we pray, God is going to give you a revelation. When you wake up tomorrow, God is going to reveal things to you that you have never seen. Because again, look, look what Paul said. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. He said, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, 
because the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. That's why Saul did what he did. Because he was a natural man. He didn't know he was wrong. But he said, they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Let me tell you something, church. I believe tonight the Holy Spirit can awaken something within all of us where we see the world completely different than we have ever seen it. Who's with me on that tonight? Greater revelation. Now again, you say, Pastor, how, how in the world? Listen, you have the greatest teacher in the world living inside of you. Jesus said in John 16, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Whatever he hears, that will he speak. He will show you things to come. Let me tell you, I believe in teaching and I believe in learning, but you have the parakletos, the Holy Ghost living inside of you. How many believe he can teach you everything you need to know from his word to lead you forward? Come on, somebody shout amen. Number four, God speaks through an audible voice. Now, when I say audible, I mean audible in your spirit. Now, there may be an audible voice that you hear with your physical ears, but most of the time, there is a voice within your spirit that seems audible to you. You hear it clearly as if someone is standing right next to you. Now you say, Pastor, why does God still speak that way? Absolutely, he does. I know because I have heard it. Many of you have heard the voice of God audibly speak into your spirit. Greatest example is that of Samuel. The Bible says in Samuel 3 that he heard his voice, and each time he ran to Eli, the priest. Look in verse 4. The Lord called to Samuel. He answered. He said, here am I. And he ran to Eli, said, here am I, you called me. It was so audible, so real, he thought that it was the priest that was calling out to him. And three times until Eli realized it is God himself calling to Samuel. And so he said in verse 9, he told Samuel, he said, go, lie down. It will be that if he calls you, you will say, speak, Lord, because your servant hears. And so Samuel went to lay down in his place. I believe God is speaking audibly to our spirit, just as he did to Samuel. But here's the deal. You have to make sure that you have exercised your spirit so that you are ready to hear the audible voice of Almighty God. You say, exercise our spirit, what do you mean? Well, let me ask you this. What happens to your body if you don't exercise your body? How many know your muscles get weaker? And as your muscles get weaker, you are not able to do what you want to do. They go into this state of atrophy. Well, the same is true for your spirit. Because look at what Paul said, 1 Timothy 4. He said, refuse profane and old wives' fables. In other words, don't listen to what everybody else is saying. He said, but rather exercise yourself unto godliness. So as you exercise your spirit by getting into the word, getting into the presence of God, you now are in a place where you can hear the audible voice of God speak into your spirit. Now, let me, I know some people are going to say, ah, but what, what, what if it's not God? What if? It, let me tell you something. When you are in the presence of God, amen, you know the voice of God. If I'm in a crowd of people that are talking and my wife starts talking, guess what? I know the voice of my wife because I've been with her for so long, I know her voice. 
Listen, Jesus said in John chapter 10, he said, my sheep, they know my voice. He said, when the porter opens, the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. Church, let me tell you something. We got to get past this fear of missing the voice of God and saying, oh, you know, what if I, let me tell you something. Just get into the presence of God. Get into the word of God. God is going to make sure you hear from him. And when you hear his voice, there is going to be no doubt that you have heard from God. God, brother, it gives you joy, it gives you peace, it gives you righteousness, it gives you victory. It puts, uh, there's times when we, it just makes you want to run. Why? Because you've heard from Almighty God. How many believe that tonight? Shout amen. The audible voice, uh, the audible voice in your spirit. Are you getting something tonight? Is this helping you? Because the last way is this. God speaks through spiritual vision. I believe that God still gives visions to people. I do. I believe, and, and this is going to be another subject that we'll talk about maybe next week about dreams. Dreams and visions. Because I believe God still speaks in dreams and visions. And we need to understand what that looks like because there's some, sometimes you have a dream and it's not from God, it's from those hot wings that you had before you went to bed. But there are times in which God will give you a vivid picture into your imagination. You will see things in the realm of the Spirit. And I'm going to tell you, church, I want, I, want, I want the church to get into that realm where we really begin to see things from God. God may bring a vision of somebody that you need to pray for. You may see a part of their body that needs healed, and you begin to pray in the Spirit for them to get healed in that part of their body. And I believe that can and, and, and the reason I know that, the Scripture is just, you know, just resolute with examples of people receiving visions. But Paul, he was called to Macedonia in Acts chapter 16 through a vision from the Holy Ghost. A vision appeared to Paul. The Bible said there stood a man of Macedonia, prayed and said, come over to Macedonia, help us. And after he had seen the vision, he said, we endeavored to go. Assuredly, gathering the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. The Holy Ghost used a vision to communicate to Peter that he was to preach to the Gentiles. In Acts chapter 10, Peter is on the rooftop. He became very hungry, the Bible says in verse 10. He would have eaten, and while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and he saw heaven opened. And a certain vessel descended, as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. And there was all manner of four-footed beasts, wild beasts, creeping things, fowls of the air. And, and the Lord said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord, I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice said again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Church, listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, I would rather be in a place where people think that I'm crazy for getting a vision from God than to run with a bunch of normal people that are not getting vision about anything, but they're getting their vision from television and news media and politicians. It's time that we get our sights set higher and start getting a vision from Almighty God. Come on, somebody. Do you believe what I'm shouting? I believe that with all of my heart. And tonight, I believe, come on team, I, I believe that God wants to awaken your spirit to begin to see things. And next week, we're going to talk about dreams. Because I believe God can speak to you through your dreams. He can give you an answer to a question through your dreams. Did you know the church we're sitting in tonight, we would not be here tonight had it not been for a vision, a physical vision that God gave to the founder of this church. I've read it so many times, but I read it again today, and I'm just going to read it to you. A 17-year-old boy named Lester Summerall was in Panama City, Florida, on his deathbed, succumbing to the ravages, and I'm going to read word for word, the ravages of tuber tuberculosis. He said, one afternoon, I started to choke and turn blue in the face. I'd been spitting blood daily for weeks, and now I was hemorrhaging. 
The boy is as good as dead, I heard the doctor tell my mother. He said it was an awful feeling to know you're dying and you're not ready to die. I wanted to live. I wanted to be a businessman with goals of making a lot of money and becoming a great success. For months, mother had been bringing in her, quote, prayer meeting group to pray over me, and they were persistent, standing around my bed, pleading with the Lord to spare my life week after week. I asked mother not to bring them back, but she did anyway. But this day was different. I was hovering between life and death. I knew what was going on. My parents were crying, and then it happened. He said, on the one side of my bed, I saw a coffin, just my size. It was open, tilted, very pretty, but empty and waiting for me to die. He said, I turned my head the other way. I didn't want to look at that casket, but on the other side of my bed, I saw a Bible. It reached from the floor to the ceiling, and I heard God say, that's my word. You have a choice, Lester. Which of these will you choose tonight? It was not an audible voice, yet it was as distinct and as firm a voice as any I had ever heard. I didn't want to be a preacher. Many times I'd heard my mother sob, Lord, save Lester, make him a preacher. I hated evangelists. Can you imagine Dr. Summerall hating evangelists? He said, I hated evangelists. I had determined I was not going to be one of them. He said, I was fighting it out with God. I wanted to live, so I pleaded with God, Lord, I'm afraid to die. I'm not ready to die. So God, if the only way in the world for me to live is to preach, I will preach. I asked God to give me a long life of preaching and promised him that I would never stop preaching as long as there was a breath in me. It was settled. And just that quickly, the vision vanished. And for the next 65 years, Lester Summerall traveled all over the world, ministered in 110 countries, including Soviet Siberia, Russia, Tibet, China, writing over 130 books. You know why? Because he got a vision from God. Now, maybe your vision's not going to be that dramatic, and I hope it's not on your deathbed. But I'm telling you, I believe that God is awakening the church out of a state of just lethargy and apathy, out of a state of just taking life day by day, barely getting through, barely paying the bills, fighting with the dog every day, going through life and just being so frustrated. Did I hit somebody on that? <laughs> But how many know what I'm talking about? And what I'm trying to do as your, as your pastor tonight is to let you know there's more to life than just the day-to-day -day mundane. There is a whole world in the supernatural where God is just wanting to show you things. He's wanting you to step into that realm and to hear His voice. And tonight, I believe that as we come around this altar, the Lord's going to awaken you. He's going to let you know there's more. There's more that he has for you. And what you've done to this moment is not enough. There's more that he has. In fact, if you thought that your life was over, God has got the biggest surprise for you because your life really is only beginning. And I don't care where you are in life. There is so much more. But you've got to hear from him.